Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe so we can get you these messages every single week. Have a great day. Welcome to the family room. Welcome back to the family room. If you're wondering uh, with the format tonight, we, we don't have Kelsey. She's got uh, other obligations. Obligations. So we are loving to have you on this wonderful Wednesday. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. We'll try to keep it short tonight since Are we, we know it's Valentine's. Are we going to ignore that it is Valentine's Day? I just Day? said it. You didn't even let me finish my sentence. <laughs> just kidding. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody, um, including the salty people that always show up on this time of year. Uh, we love you. Jesus loves you. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll keep it short tonight because, um, you know, we've got women to go. Our to wives go. are home crying right now. Okay. She just said she's watching from the softball field. So. Oh. There's that. Okay. Uh, the announcements, you know, there's not really a whole lot going on. I'm just kidding. Sunday's um, food truck thing was absolutely oh, phenomenal. Man. That was awesome. Um, we got to say thank you to everybody. Yeah, thank you to everybody. Super. I believe they sold out. Um, yeah. I know I went to go get the grilled cheese thing, uh, the pepperoni grilled cheese, and they were completely out of sourdough. So I was a little upset, but it was on flatbread. That was delicious. Luckily, Mom had mm -hmm. um, the sourdough one already, mm -hmm. and I got to have a bite of that, which was like the- Throw out a shout to both of them, like, uh, Casey's Hot Dogs. Casey's and, Dogs, uh, those were super good. Mm -hmm. In fact, I saw them Very today, good. they were at Beaver Toyota. Oh. So they were packed. Yeah, they people. were they were delicious. And, and Yamo. Uh, Yamo, the other one was Yamo. Um, so good. So good. It was such a great day, and thank you to all of our, our church people uh, for being there and staying. and. There was there were lines 30 40 people long and I went out and I was like man thanks for waiting thanks for waiting and the lines went quick and uh, Kelsey's already working on next month and it looks like what we're gonna do is maybe two or maybe even yeah I think three. they said they might look at bringing three to help with the lines I was I was proud of everybody for waiting through the lines mm -hmm. um, if you decided to leave early because you didn't want to wait in the line you severely missed out it missed was a good they were, time. They were good fellowship. everything was so good, good. food the kids had a great time, bounce houses. Yes. Kids Everything was great. It. It's it was just one of those of magical times. Uh, our What we're really pressing in on that is community, just trying to bring community back together again, and, uh, and it's working. People want to be a part of a community and supporting like that, the, the food truck, supporting local businesses here in town. Exactly. What a beautiful Can't thing. go wrong with can't that. Can't go wrong. Ever. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, with the announcements, um, it looked, I think February is a little bit light. At least there's... I'm not it's seeing almost much. almost over. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, well, I guess. We are already halfway there. The next Dining with Dignity looks like it's on March 7th, and the next Women's Fellowship is uh, March 14th. We got baptisms coming up April 7th, Ooh. and, um, you know, that's all I want to do for announcements. Every Monday, hold the Holy Spirit Oh, yeah, study. that's still going on. It's Every still going Monday, on, doing great. Holy, Holy Spirit Kathy, class. Kathy, by the way, for the ladies, people are asking. Uh, Kathy is preparing the next ladies fellowship or, or, or small group Bible study, fam group. Uh, Kelsey is getting ready to start a brand new ladies fam group. No, on young adults. Uh, young adults fam group, right? Yeah, yeah young fam adults group. fam group. Not just ladies. 18 to 40 something, I don't know. But you can find them. There's a bunch of different fam groups popping up on our app. If you don't have it, go to the website, familychurch.social, scroll down, there's the buttons for the app. A lot of people watching. Uh, I'm still waiting for it to pop up on the Amazon Fire Stick and Google. I was trying to search it the other day, but I don't think that's quite released yet, which will be cool. Um, a lot of people watching tonight. Welcome to everybody in yes. the rooms. Let us know if you like it like this, or if you liked how it was last week with the multiple cameras. Uh, like I said, Kelsey's out tonight. She's uh, she's at softball with Carolyn, and uh, I see <laughs> I'm a delight. She's already trying. It's delicious. It's <laughs> delectable. I'm having a delightful time. I'm ready to get into D-show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm supposed to D-look. I don't know if I'm supposed to look at you. Or if I'm supposed to... <laughs> After earlier, we need to decompress. <laughs> this is an inside joke, unless you were watching the Facebook reel from it's default earlier. Uh, so today we are talking about eliminating excuses, uh, embracing your potential. That was a sermon that I, mm -hmm. I preached on Sunday out of Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. If you had something that stood out to you, especially something controversial, uh, you know, because I, I guess I'm known for that apparently, uh, let us know. Put it in the comments. Um, 
I just, there was a lot of things. Lot Let of me things. say, as uh, a guy sitting on the front row, uh, and it was a sentiment that was echoed by a lot of people here that day, that was your best one, best one yet. Think so? Yes, sir. Well, there's yep. more to come. No eventually. doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Your, I think it was your seventh. I, I don't I know why I'm keeping, keeping a cap on Have I'm you? Keeping, I'm keeping I haven't, track. I on. haven't kept track. Is uh, that counting the two from the youth, or is that just No, seven this is here? just in-house, what you're doing here. And the seven, and just really composed and well-delivered and well-thought-out, uh, very composed in your present. Just, I'm a proud dad, but uh, you'll find, and you're, you will, and you have found, that even in those those great moments that you're going to have somebody who's not happy. And they're because somebody commented this afternoon, they were surprised that you got a little hate mail. I'm not. Um, not at all. I'm a very blunt person. Uh, I have a very incredibly dry sense of humor. And I think that rubs people the mm -hmm. wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mince words. I don't mind saying my feelings too much. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably gonna get me in hot water at some point, as you, we already see. But uh, you Jesus like didn't that, though, you guys, uh, the people watching, don't you prefer it like that rather than somebody who just candy coats and sugar coats and tiptoes around everything? Well, we've got enough diabetic Christians. We need some people that get in with the yeah. meat and potatoes. And Can we hear that from you guys? Us. A little like button, a little love button. Share it in the chat. I prefer that somebody would just speak the truth and don't try to apologize. Don't spend five minutes apologizing for it. Uh, Vody Bachheim talks about that, how that uh, when somebody goes to speak on a controversial subject, they negate that subject by taking five minutes to apologize for what they're about to say. And you then they say it, too. and then they apologize for another five minutes. Just speak the truth and don't worry about my feelings. It's not about your feelings. Well, that was um, one of the, the little courses that I've gotten for preaching to help me kind of find my voice. Oh, you and mean get you're going to bit. school for this? Well, that's, that's, this is apart from the school. So I'm doing the schooling obviously. And then I've also started uh, a, a preaching kind of class, master mm -hmm. class kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and one of the things that they talked about, cause I was iffy on it, but then I was really glad, glad that I got into it. One of the guys was talking that we need to get back to how the prophets and the people in the Bible proclaimed the word of God. They proclaimed, what is it? We already got a, some hate mail. Your girl. What, what do I have on? She loves you. Oh, see what necklace I have on. She hates this. It's Valentine's Day. I'm just Day. kidding. Thank I'm you. I'm just kidding. She doesn't hate this. Uh, no, but he was talking about getting back to proclaiming the word of God mm -hmm. instead of just speaking it or teaching it, but actually having passion and emotion yeah. and proclaiming and not being afraid of it. And he said, you know, you just can't be afraid of it because they weren't afraid of it back in the in the in the day when the Bible was written and when they were living it out. And one of the things he was talking about was how he stood up in his church before and he made um, he made a, a I can't remember what he was preaching on now, but he made a comment about how you know some of the people would have no uh, no care dropping yeah. twenty grand on a vacation to, mm -hmm. you know, some island or going on a cruise or whatever. And not that any of that is wrong, but then they won't put any money towards the kingdom of God. They won't put any money towards support, supporting the church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just, he's got, you've got to have that bold, that bold proclamation. Yep. And while we're in that neighborhood next week on the Wednesday is the day that they're meeting to discuss about our land. So we we'll praying for that. You sent me a little thing. I, I, I didn't acknowledge it, but I've, I've been watching it. Um, Eighty-nine percent of potential giving in church goes to other philanthropic things. If you don't encourage the members to give to your church, they'll give to everything else. I'm really going to dig in on that, and, and so thank God for everybody who gives. Did you like the clip that I sent you from one of Furtick's message messages? Which, which one? The one where he was uh, saying that he was talking to a businessman, and the guy oh, was yeah, saying, "Yeah." I loved it. I, I wanted. I need to share it. I would mm -hmm. love to put it on the church page. Welcome to the family room. He said. Uh, he said he was talking to a businessman one time, and the guy said, "I would hate to have your job." And he's mm -hmm. like, "Why is that? Do you do you not like speaking?" The guy said, "I don't mind speaking." He said, "I would hate to run a business where people come in and they have already decided if they're going to pay for the service or not." Right. And he said, "I can't, you can't run a business like that." And he obviously, said I would go their church it. steps up, and you know, and and obviously. People in our church that's a step up around a step up as well, but it is important to um, you know bring bring the tithes to the storehouse. Yeah, and we need to encourage. You know, we don't this church we don't talk much about giving. We don't talk much about your your giving, but we've got some very faithful people that do. But we need to encourage everyone to be involved, participate. Um, 
it looks like we're going to be able to purchase that land and it's going to happen. And then the real work starts and the giving makes it happen. Yeah, so as much as the land is, we know that buildings yes, and three every, times as much everything inside is going to be, uh, gonna be so we significantly more. <laughs> need everybody to be on board. I see a lot of people in the rooms. Thank you for your comments. Still being inspired by last Sunday. Thank you for that. Uh, I see the Kathy Murray dropped our calendar of events on the line in the chat. Thank you for doing that. We appreciate you guys doing that. So tonight, talk about it. Are you existing or are you living? Has anybody been working on eliminating their excuses? Let's let's go with that. Eliminating excuses. Put that put that in the chat. Eliminating excuses. I talked about how Moses fleed everything that he had. He left his life of abundance and started living a life of inadequacy. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that can relate to that kind of living where they have maybe not lost everything that they've owned, but where they felt like they were, you know, at the top of their game or their business was thriving or their marriage was thriving. And then something came along and knocked everything down. And now you find yourself wandering the wasteland of your life full of worry. You know, I talked about uh, how Moses, it was just that that routine of redundancy. Wake up, check the mm -hmm. flock. Go to that bed, check the flock. Wake up, check mm -hmm. the flock. Go to bed, check the flock. Wake up, check Facebook. That was really good. That made a good reel. That was, I mean, it's true. We spend so much time, like, it's, when you get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do when you grab your phone? Do you immediately go to social media or do mm -hmm. you go to scripture? Me? I'll straight up, I go straight to social media because <laughs> I need, well, but it's not personal. I do go to check the, the church. I check uh, the comments. I check the reels, making sure that nobody has dropped bombs on us. And, <laughs> and when they have, we we'll try to find a way to Most of the time, lovingly. we stay on top of it as, be as best we can. But uh, yeah, no, uh, most Ooh. of the time... Most of the time, I, I start with scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to make sure I go head first into that because I, I find not that I am the happiest person always in the world, mm -hmm. shocker, but uh, if I don't get Jesus first, um, <laughs> my day just kind of, it will really get off the rails mm -hmm. and I'll just be a complete, uh, you know what. Mm -hmm. But um, what was something that stood out to you? That, are you living or just, just existing? Uh, it really inspired me. I thought about it from the flip side also, not from somebody who, like Moses, who had it all and lost it, but from someone who had nothing and then went in the other direction and lived a life that excluded God. So I just, in my head, that's how my mind works. I flipped it because you were talking about, because sometimes we think that the people, the only people that need the gospel are the down and out and the people that don't have it together and the people that have lost everything. But it's also the up and in excuse me, that need it as well. So my, I'm sitting on the front row thinking about um, being in the palace, but then excluding God from your life. And you're just, you know, you're living your life, but God has no part in it. And that's how it is sometimes when you're, when you're doing well and you're prospering. In your prosperity, you have the tendency to forget God, trust yourself. I've got a full bank account. I've got money. I'm, I'm all right. I'm going to be all right. And, you know, there's no need to have faith. And so if, to me, it worked on, on both of them. I have something um, in one of my notes for, uh, I think it was the sermon, the sermon I was trying to write on anxiety, and then I had too much anxiety to finish it. Mm -hmm. But no, it, I, I do want to preach it. It just hasn't, it hasn't came together. Um, that was the one I was working on, and then God put this one on me, so we went with that one. But one of the things that I have, one of the points that you'll hear, hear first until it ends up on whatever the sermon ends up being, was that we often... It seems like we forget God until it feels like God has forgotten us. Mm -hmm. When everything is going good in your life, you you tend to start slacking. You tend to, you know, pick up your phone and not to rag on you, but you tend to pick up your phone and go to social media more mm -hmm. than you go to the Bible. You your your Bible ends up collecting dust on your uh, on your nightstand, mm -hmm. you know, and everything's going good. So you tend to kind of start forgetting to put God first. You, you tend to, to quit seeking first the kingdom of God. And then only when things start kind of slipping onto the other end of the rails and everything starts going south and then you're wondering, well, God, what's going on? You know, and it feels like God has forgotten you. And it's like, no, you just haven't taken any time to actually spend with him. And, you know, now you've got hell coming completely against you. And, you know, God may be using that to get your attention. You have to spend time cultivating that relationship, just like every other relationship that matters. If you spend no time cultivating it, that relationship will go away. 
husbands, wives, family, work, whatever it is, uh, your relationship with your health. If you don't cultivate your health, it'll go away. So yeah, whatever you focus on, that tends to grow. So that was good for me. I enjoyed that that part of it. Excuses, people making excuses for why they can't, and why they are not able, why they're not worthy. Um, it really, you, you alluded to the ants. Ants. I was listening to it again this afternoon and I heard that part. Automatic negative thinking syndrome. Somebody put that in the chat. It is Ants. in, I got that out of Stephen Furtick's new book, uh, Do the New You. Mm -hmm. It's in the beginning. And uh, it, I mean, he said the same thing. You know, he has it where he just instantly goes to, you know, negative mindsets, negative thinking, negative thought patterns. And, you know, that's something I find myself doing all the time. And so I wanted to, I tried to be as transparent as I can uh, to relate to the people. And I want to so dig in on that, can I? That just seems crazy to me. <laughs> uh, not, not, not for you, but like, well, yeah, for you too. But like for somebody like him, he's on a level that everyone aspires to be at. His, you know, his ministry has exploded. He's global. He's, I mean, they, they, they do it all. Music, word, books, services. I mean, they're everywhere. To think that he sits around with a negative mindset is boggling to me. I would think that you would just sit around thinking, look what God has done. And then for you, um, bragging on you as gifted and skilled and talented and smart as you are, relatively handsome, but you know, not entirely. <laughs> uh, but to think that you, you know, you struggle with that. that that's kind of crazy to me. I don't he, know. He's made a point too. Um, and I don't think I've ever said it from, from up here that the, the funny thing is uh, that preachers, it, the, the paradox of the preacher is that we're kind of incredibly hypocritical because we tend to be the most insecure people on the planet. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're up here trying to hype everybody up. We're up here trying to preach hope into your life. We're up here trying to tell you about the gospel and tell you, mm -hmm. you know, this is what God thinks of you. This is what Jesus wants to do with you. This is what God wants to work through you. This is how he views you. And the whole time we're like, oh, is this, you know, is this really going across, you know, everybody's being quiet. Is it, do I sound stupid? Does this make any sense? Mm -hmm. You know, do they think I'm a fool? Do they think I'm, I'm making it all up? Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's the paradox of the preacher is just that we're, we're working it out just as much as we are speaking it to everyone else. I can relate to that. The eight years that I spent in a, in a depression when things were falling apart and not going well at all. Um, I, and I've said it, he's exactly right. I, I got up in church and I encouraged people to to believe and thrive and do well and you're going to be all right and go home and collapse in bed and just lay there for hours uh, struggling with my own depression. So yeah, I can see that, but uh, I left that behind long since, but I don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. I came to the point of, you know, just about to lose my mind and God restored me Wednesday night, May the 2nd, 2001 at the Judah conference and put it all back together for me. And from then until now, I've never struggled with that, thank God. Uh, but I, you know, shouldn't have said it, huh? Shouldn't have said it. No, I won't. I still, won't. I still won't. I'm too stupid to, to struggle with it. I see people I'm living and being dead. But think about that automatic negative thinking syndrome. I appreciate your transparency to share that, because uh, you're you're only sick as the secrets you keep. And so when you take that out and you put it out in public, just being as transparent as you said, you're transparent. You begin to heal. People encourage you. More people who are, can relate to that can relate to you and say, "Yeah, I feel the same way." So it builds, you know, community. It makes it come together. It's not like I think people are tired of preachers that um, live in ivory towers and don't seem to be re relatable to everybody. And you know, hopefully we 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 put our well, pants that, on. That's what I don't understand because we're all we're all human. Yeah, you said that very well. So. We're all we're all human, uh, and you know, we're all everybody's dealing with something, and that's what. We were talking about earlier, you know, sin is sin is to God. It is a, a level playing field. But since humanity, we like to think of ourselves as better than someone else. We put tears on the sin. So we think, OK, well, uh, you know, I stole from them some of the store today, but at least I didn't murder someone. We think, uh, you know, I lied to my wife today. But, hey, at least, uh, you know, I'm not out smoking crack 
and beating my kids. It, it's everybody, no matter what it is, they think that whatever they're doing is less than whatever someone else is doing. And it's only a matter of mm -hmm. focusing on someone else's faults so we can stop worrying about our own and stop focusing on our own. Well, since you brought that up, what a great segue. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> what a great segue. Smoking crack. One of the reels that Kelsey put together that has blown up is the one, the one that we're all familiar with now. If you have not seen it, go find it. Where can they find our reels? It's at? on it's on our Facebook. It's also on YouTube. I would say if you the one on Facebook has uh, almost 4,000 views. And mm -hmm. when I checked a minute ago, it wow. had 41 shares. I think that was the most shared thing we've had yet. Go to that and find go, it. Well, Share. I would say let's spread it like wildfire because I believe in the message. Mm -hmm. uh, the reel is called Drunk in Church. It's on YouTube. Go find it on our YouTube under the shorts tab. Go find it under the reels on Facebook. Share it, put a comment, yes. like on it, and just make it spread like wildfire. Um, that one caught some, mm -hmm. some, some, uh, some underwear in a wad from a some fleck. completely random person. But uh, I, I will stand by my words 150%. You know, Jesus was called a glutton. He was called a drunkard. He didn't come for the, for the, the saved. He came for the lost. Mm -hmm. You know, the church is the hospital for the broken. And I just, I think it's ridiculous that self-righteous people, they just, they, they think that the church is some exclusive club. Mm -hmm. And I, I cannot, I can't stand that. I, I mean, I literally said, if you want to just come in and bash people and, you know, oh, you're doing this wrong and you're doing that wrong. And, hey, I think this is a sin. And, oh, if you're cussing, you're going to hell. Or if you're doing this, you're going to hell. You're not God. You're not Jesus. You're not the judge. And whatever you judge with, you're going to be judged against. Mm -hmm. And that is not your place to make the final stay. If they're still breathing, God's not done with them yet. And sanctification is a lifelong process. So I can't stand when people just bash other people. That's that's literally why I said, there's the door. I didn't even think about it when I said it, but it's just stupid to me. And so do you want, are you, are you wanting to dive into that or? Oh, I love all of that. Uh, my, the old Southern saying is that when you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, the first one that howled is the one you hit. You're welcome. What? See, y'all young people don't know these expressions. When you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, the first one to howl is the first one you hit. So apparently that hit a mark. It found something in this person that they were offended by. And so there was a reason behind it. But it was a tremendous, it was a tremendous response. And the way that you responded and we responded was uh, appropriate and, and loving and, and all of that. But we have got to, this church is... Maybe it's not like every other place. I don't know. But we are. We meet you where you are. We love you like you are. We like messy people. We don't soft pedal sin. Never. No. We're not going to. The Word of God is the Word of God. Sin is sin. But at the same time, for you to stand up on the platform like that and say, if you're drunk and you're in church, I'm happy that you're here. We've got people that responded to that on Sunday that were that and a couple of them are in the room tonight. And that was their testimony. That was their testimony. You know, I came to this church, I sat in the back. Uh, I couldn't even come up front. I sat way in the back just so hopefully nobody would see me. And God met them there and their life has changed. One of my best friends, Larry Roy, I'll, I'll say his name out loud. He came to the church on Kings State Road. He was drunk when he came to church. My dad met him and talked to him. He came back that night, gave his life to Jesus and he's walked with Christ for 30 years. For someone to say that we should keep drunks out of church, that's just messed up. Uh, of course, there's protocol and there's order and all of that. And if somebody were to get out of order, we would we would respond to that. But we're just going to meet you there. We're going to love you there. And we're going to let what you in. What do you think Jesus did? He was accused of he stuff. He literally went out and sought these people. And it's not that it's not about tolerating their sin. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what the other thing the guy said was, because you commented, you know, he said that dr drunks and people like that don't belong in church. You said, yes, they do. Yes, he they said, do. only after they sober up. That is the most disturbing kind of thinking to me because all that screams is works based salvation. And this is our club, and you're not that a member. That literally is just saying, you can't get into heaven until you clean your life up. And, and I don't know anybody that came to Jesus completely spotless. And shocker, even after mm -hmm. they came to Jesus, they're still not completely spotless. But luckily, because of grace and God calling you righteous, he deems you spotless. One of my favorite moments in the life of Jesus, maybe I should preach it, 
is when he was having dinner where he should not have had dinner. He was at the home of a Pharisee, God forbid, and the prostitute burst in the door, fell at his feet. She washed his feet with her tears and dried it with her hair. Don't you think she's a prostitute? Don't you think that everybody at that table and sitting in that circle was wondering, where does he know her from? Are they an item? Are they a thing? What did he do? Why is she so upset? He must have done something. They must be more than friends. He didn't mind. He didn't mind being judged. He didn't mind their opinions. He just loved her. So what she has done will be remembered forever as a memorial to her. So I Jesus think, is more concerned with the person. I think he's more concerned with redeeming people than he is concerned about his reputation. Say that again. Jesus is more concerned about redeeming people than he is with their reputation. I think that's the problem with humanity mm -hmm. is they're afraid to they're afraid to seek out the lost. They're afraid to be associated with someone that they think is messy, even though God is going to use your mess to spread his message and the Messiah meets you in the middle of your mess. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, you know, when people come in to church and there's people looking at them like, oh, look what they're wearing or look how they dressed or look how they smell. Uh, hey. they're drunk, right? And it's like this is if you're if you're drunk and you're coming to church, mm -hmm. you're obviously in some depressive or some mm -hmm. type of state of mind that you're seeking help. Right. You don't just come to church mm -hmm. because of nothing, especially when you're drunk. And what better place to be? That, that's what flabbergasted me about yeah. this is, oh, they, they shouldn't be there. You, you Go get their address and then go preach to them. And it's like, no, yes. they're exactly where they need to be. Amen. They're exactly where they need to be. So My sister Brenda, your aunt Brenda, was away from God, came back to the Lord, and was traveling somewhere one day to go from one state to another. It was Sunday. She wanted to go to church. Uh, she was wearing a pair of slacks, and she stopped at a at a church and went inside. <laughs> slacks, pants, and sat down. And the people came over to her and said, "Honey, we love you." No, you don't. But you can't, <laughs> right? But you can't wear those pants in here. We prefer you have a dress on. And Brenda got up and left, and never went back. I wouldn't either. But you it's know? people like that, and it's people like the guy on our Facebook mm -hmm. that. If, if you're that type of person and all you want to do is point out people's faults and tell them they shouldn't be in church and tell them what they're doing is wrong and tell them that they're going to hell, you're not leading anyone to Jesus. And you are literally the exact reason why so many people have fallen out of the church, turned their back on God and said, screw that place. I'm never going back. We're going to love you. We're just going to love you and we're going to risk our own reputation. It's That's just, true, too, uh, of a lot of places. Can't. They're afraid that it's going to damage their reputation. If I'm seen with that person, it might hurt my... Jesus made himself of no reputation. The friend of sinners. That's my favorite Literally type. Literally called. My friend favorite type. of sinners, which means he's your friend. Yep. I just... It, if we're wrong, y'all can tell us in the chat. <laughs> please do. Let's do it live. Let's do it live. Bring it on. I'm ready. <laughs> and uh, Kathy Murray, yes, I will at some point bring the moments back. I'm not sure when. But My we'll... wonderful mother-in-law a minute ago mentioned the quote I made about limitations. If you argue for your limitations, Oof. you get to keep them. Uh, that was one of my favorites, too. And that's that's uh, such a good – and, you know, the, the further of the point that I went farther down was that uh, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. But if you agree with God about your potential, you'll get to grow in it. And – you know, that's that's something I've dealt with and I've been pretty vocal about it being up here. You know, that's only the seventh sermon, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, when you're, I don't know if it just comes with being a perfectionist or being in such a competitive mindset or maybe it's just because of ants. Um, the, the thing of, you know, I'm stepping up here and I'm comparing myself to how you preach. I'm comparing myself to how mm -hmm. Clint Brown preaches or or Mike Todd or Stephen Furtick or Mike Driscoll. And it's all these people that have been doing it way longer than I am. Oh, well. But longer than you've been alive. Older than I am. and Longer than you've been alive. Not all of them, but you, yes. Most of them. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing with comparison. That's mm -hmm. the, the trap. And that's what, when you, that's why you'll argue for your limitations. You get fearful because you're not comparing you know, nobody is going to take the time and like for you. So I don't know if there is even a recording of you 
on a tape or whatever of when you preached your seventh sermon? Probably not. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it, can you imagine, though, like, no. what, how would the difference be? Yeah. And you would compare yourself to, I mean, you know how it was, but I don't. I and so it would be two weeks ago. it would be different to go, okay, that was my seventh sermon. Let's sit down, listen to your seventh sermon mm -hmm. and see, you know, oh, okay, might make me feel better about myself. Maybe. I don't know. But that's not how comparison works. Comparison works by, hey, I see this person doing this and they're successful. I see this doing this person doing this, and that's how, you know, I would like to be able to do it. This is how I would like to be able to look while I'm doing it. I'd love to be able to throw things out. You know, off the top of my head, I would love my business to look like their business. Amen. But they've been doing it longer than you have. They've plowed the ground longer than you have. You haven't seen their ups or you haven't seen their downs. You've only seen their ups. You, you're you comparing yourself to them at their peak mm -hmm. and you're still in your process. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with arguing for your limitations. You know, I still get stuck in the mindset of I know someday that you're retiring. So I know I have to, <laughs> hopefully not soon, because I'm still arguing for my limitations. Um, um, you know, I'm just, like the one I said about, you know, I'm not ready. That was like Moses. Who am I? And so I'm sitting here knowing mm -hmm. in the future, okay, I got to do a sermon a week. But I have that, that scarcity mindset of like, how am I going to do that? And it's, you know, like I stress about the ones that I do now. And, you know, Kelsey even said it. She was like, you went through all that and you were so worried and you were so anxious. And then, you know, it was really great and you worried about nothing. And I was like, no, I mean, I'm still going to I'm still going to have that those thoughts, unfortunately, just to be honest. You know, I'm working on it, but it's like, you know, as I'm going through it and I'm reading and I'm preparing, I'm like, am I am I bringing enough to the table? Am I, is it going to be an awesome 10 minutes or is it going to be a phenomenal hour? Because I don't want to preach for 15 minutes. I like to take my time mm -hmm. and soak in the, you know, soak in the text and soak in the word and slowly walk things out. Because I think that gets into people more than if you just do like a drive by mm -hmm. preaching session that's 10 minutes long and you mm -hmm. can hit some highlights and it might be great. But, mm -hmm. you know, is it going to stick with anybody? Amen. It's like reading the Bible as fast as you physically can. It's not you're not going to retain as much as if you if, if you meditate on the text. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just something that I'm I'm still trying to walk out with. And it's like that's why I'm thankful for the book that I'm reading. You know, God, God will give you what the strength you need when you need it. God will give you what you need when you need it. He will. He gives you, you know, that's the 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 the, the good Lord, the prayer. Mm hmm. Our Father who art in heaven, give us our daily bread. Mm -hmm. He doesn't talk about give me bread for 12 weeks. Give me bread for 12 years. He says the daily bread. He gives you the strength that you need for the when day. And, and we get so stuck worrying about what's coming up, what's coming next. Am I going to be, how am I going to be at this time? And it's like you only need to focus on one day at a time and walk in the, the daily bread that he is giving you and the strength. At any point, you can start talking. You're just going to let me ramble on. I said tonight I was just gonna bring a bag of popcorn and listen. Well, you know, it didn't. We didn't go crazy because I'm not gonna. You can't. You can't give. Um, what was that? What was that one that I said? Galatians one fifteen to sixteen. When God set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me, so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. That's a good choice. Because people can give you 20 reasons why you're not qualified, you're not capable, unqualified. You're Somebody capable. should write a book on that. You haven't been, you haven't been to school, you haven't done it enough, uh, blah, blah, blah. You, you speak inappropriately, you use the wrong words. There's always an armchair theologian that has mm -hmm. no significance in the world and no studies apart from their own right. that will tell you exactly that you don't know the Bible. I mean, it's like the, the guy that's 600 pounds watching the Super Bowl and yelling at his TV about a dropped pass. Right. And you it's ain't like, there being you, chased you around don't even it. know what running is. The only running you do is waddling to the fridge to grab another ice cream. Comparison. Lauren, yeah, that's good. Which room is that? That's what YouTube, YouTube on the left. Comparison. What is this? the old saying? Comparison is the thief of joy, the greatest thief of joy. So it's it a is. trap. It's a trap. It's a you trap. Get you will it, get so. stuck in it, the and sooner you you'll can never break it, think the you're good enough. Be yourself. Somebody should put that in the chat. Be oh, they did. Kathy Murray, be yourself. <laughs> be yourself. Thank it's you, the only Kathy. See. Cynthia Searle. I was raised in a church that was grown by the inclusion of outcasts. Calvary Chapel, California. 
That church grew into the thousands, and it's still one of the powerful churches in, the, in the, the America. They welcomed hippies. It was at the time of the hippies. They welcomed the, the long hairs, the barefoots. They, were, they welcomed everybody, and that church just exploded. And, I, you know, I, I really think that that's what I want to see us do here. Once the word gets out to our community that there is a place, come on, help us, that there is a place where you won't be judged, you won't be beat over the head, you're going to be told the truth, you're going to be challenged, you're going to be challenged to grow, you're going to be challenged to, to change, get into God's word. But at the same time, there is no totem pole, there is no big eye, little you. Uh, that's not Jesus. That's not how he does things. He's more interested in redeeming people than... His reputation. His reputation. You're trying to remember? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's a great quote. But maybe put that on a shirt. Yeah, we'll get Kelsey to put it on a, a mug. Um, oh, what was I about to say? Oh, one of you know that was nope. I lost it again. One of the uh, one of the first things that we had that I had I remember talking about on the family room when we first got going was about making like apologetics, making a defense for the faith. But the Bible, as, as great it is to, to be able to make a defense for your faith, the Bible is offensive. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes people mad because it convicts. But convicting is not condemnation. The Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you, it convicts you. It convicts you to change, to save you from spending eternity in hell. But people don't want change, they don't like change, they resist change as much as they can. And I think that's why, you know, that is why the Bible is so offensive. It's meant to be offensive. Mm -hmm. It's meant to challenge you. It's meant to change you. It's Amen. meant to be a crucible to change the way that you're thinking, to change you into the true you, the one that God always knew. Mm -hmm. You know, Jeremiah, he, he knew you before you were formed in the womb. He knew you before all your shame, before your addiction, and, you know, before all the bad stuff. But he knows the you that you are going to grow into. Amen. And that's why, you know, that's why you're convicted. That's why it challenges you. That's why it's important to stay rooted in his word and have that daily discipline. You need people in your lives that will challenge you like that. Challenge you to be better. Challenge you to grow. Challenge you to, to, to fight your limits. I, that's why I love that quote. That is one of my favorite things that I think that you've ever said. Uh, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. That daily challenges me uh, because I don't want to be known by my limitations. I want to be known as a person who stepped out and did bold things by faith and in God. Well, the fun, it. we, it, it's fun. God doesn't have limits. Right. God is limitless. He's all knowing, all powerful, omnipotent. He, he has no limits. But since we do within, a sort of reason, we tend to put our limits on God. We mm -hmm. think, you know, oh, I can't do this, so God's not going to do it for me. Mm -hmm. I can't do this, so God's not going to answer my prayer. I can't do this, so maybe God can't do it. And one of the, one, a phenomenal thing I just heard, I can't remember if it was today or a couple days ago, it was um, whatever you put after I am is a direct reflection on God. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I am a failure, because we are created Ooh. in the image of God, we're, we're the reflection of God. So when you say, I am a failure, mm -hmm. you're essentially calling God a failure. Come on. When you say, you know, I'm afraid, calling God afraid. When you say, you know, put that I'm not chat. doing anything right. You're saying God can't do anything so right. So what we're, should we say? What should we replace that with? I am able. You don't have to say, I am afraid. Because that becomes your identity. Mm -hmm. When you say, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of doing this. I, I, you know, you need to change it to, I feel afraid. Mm -hmm. I feel fear. Mm -hmm. It can't become your identity. You Boy, know, I'm, great I'm no good. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm not feeling good, but God has already deemed me worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know I'm, a, I'm afraid. You're, no, you're feeling fear. fear probably because you're being challenged to do something you've never done before, because mm -hmm. you're being challenged to step into something you've never stepped into before. I am blank. You are a, a reflection of your maker. You're a reflection of God. We were created in his image. And when you start labeling things on yourself that were never intended to be there, you're essentially throwing those labels at God. And you need to stop making that your identity because Christ is your identity. And that's, you know, that's what we need to, uh, the whole, you know, uh, Christ is in me. I am enough. Mm -hmm. I am enough. He that's says right. I am enough. He's in good. me. Mm -hmm. And so, 
you know, that's just the thing. God, God doesn't have limitations. We need to quit putting our limitations on God. Mm -hmm. We need to quit putting our excuses on God. Because like I said, Sunday, when you, when you go back, because I focus more on kind of the later half of the passage, but when you go back to verse uh, seven or eight, and he's talking about, you know, I, I am concerned. I've, I've heard the cry of Israel. God is a God who cares. He is concerned. He's, he's with you in your suffering. He doesn't like your suffering. That was obviously never the intention by his design. And then he tells Moses, I have come down mm -hmm. to rescue the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So you go. Moses was the vessel. Moses was just the, you know, he was just supposed to be the spokesperson. And he kept arguing for his limitations. And then God, you know, he sends Aaron to help him. And I think it's, What's a really cool, another point to look at is he didn't, he could have replaced Moses. He could have said, okay, you don't want to do it, fine, I'll get someone else. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want to get someone else. He wants to use you. He wants to use the least expected people to do the most unexpected things. It brings him great glory. And that's, that's how he gets his glory. You know, that's, that's why some things, I think, take longer because it, it stretches your faith in order to trust him. If... If you could do it on your, it's like, you know, with Gideon mm -hmm. and there was, was it 3,000 or 30,000 people that it started out with? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It started that they out started with, out with a lot and then he winnowed it down and windowed, windowed it down to, to 300 people. 300. And though, you know, that's just God showing like if you go with all these people, yeah, you could do it. Mm -hmm. But then you'll think you did it in your own might. So I need to strip you down to what you think is weak so that I can show my strength off. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. There's so much to be preached right there. God is all about getting his glory, getting his honor, being worshiped. And when he wants to use you to for your met for his message, he's not worried about your mess. He wants to use your mess for his message, Amen. because that's the whole point of the testimony is to look back and say, look what God did. Look what God has done in my life. Look what God did for me. Look how he brought me out of this. And that's what grinds my gears with that stinking, you know what, popping up on our Facebook, you know, drunk people shouldn't be in church. Yes, they should. That is the exact place they should be. Absolutely. At, always. Y'all are going to have to watch this over and over again. There's a lot of little nuggets in there. So watch it again and again. What did you think? Because I know you wanted to bring it up a little bit on the name thing. What did I think? Yeah. I thought it would be a great Father's Day sermon. <laughs> oh, the summit? Are you going to steal it? Uh, depending on who preaches Father's Day. <laughs> I don't know if I will or if you will. <laughs> uh, but son who had no father. Uh, and we, you, you, you answered that well. Somebody asked about it. Somebody asked about it. And so you, you gave your uh, research. You gave your references. Yeah, I gave my references. Um, it was based on, well, not based on. So Moses was, I'll pull it up and I'll read it. It was, it. it was in a book that was written by someone who was that I wrote, was written. The guy already has a master of divinity. Moses' name, uh, since he was since he was raised more by Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. he was he was born Israelite, but he was raised Egyptian. And you know what what I find interesting is it's recorded in Exodus as being you know I I pulled you out of water. Well, Moses was the one that wrote Exodus, so I <laughs> think. He put that meaning down. Obviously, it was kind of like a double meaning. He had the Hebrew name meant pull out, and that's what how God saved them. He pulled them out through the water. I mean, his name literally goes with what God was going to do through him. But being raised Egyptian and by an Egyptian, Moses' name was likely a form of an Egyptian word transliterated into English as Mos, which in its various forms meant born of or son of. Typically, such a name included, included a prefix, and that prefix was often the name of an Egyptian god, false gods, demons. For example, among the pharaohs, there was Thutmos, which was the son of the god Thoth. There is Ramses, or Ramesu, I don't know how you say that, but Messes, M-E-S-S-E-S, -S -E -S, or M-E-S-S-U, -S -S is another form of Mose, son of the god Ra. There is Amos, the first born of the god. Ah, yeah. I don't know how you say that one. But in the case of Moses, a child who was found in the Nile and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, choosing the name Moses could have been a way of marking him as one whose father was unknown. Since it was simply Moses without a prefix, it was a son without a father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, the, every name in the Bible was always chosen mm -hmm. 
for specific reasons. Jacob, the deceiver, the heel grabber. Yeah. And, you know, that's just the thing was the name, the name, his Egyptian name, son of no one. So it would have been a reminder. It, that's, I think that's why, I think since he had such those, that constant reminder of being adopted and seeing his people oppressed, that's probably what re- led him to that, that kind of righteous anger moment where he murdered the Egyptian that was oppressing his people. Mm-hmm. And what started the whole path. All in all, powerful day. Great sermon. Great message. I'm sure you guys feel the same if you were able to watch it. If not, go back and take a look at it. Watch it again a couple of times. Find it. Share it. Find the reels. Share the reels. Find the reel. Drunk in church. Drunk in church. Share that. That needs to go out. and People need to hear it. Get it out into our community. Sunday is coming. This Sunday is 10 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you guys here. Stacy, I saw you. Stacy Hyatt up there in the North Georgia Mountains. We're coming to see you. We're going to be there shortly. Uh, but we're looking forward to another great weekend. Uh, great things going on. It's it's a beautiful time. We pray that you guys are having the great time as well, that things are going well in your life. Uh, put it in the chat how we can pray for you. Thank you for talking to one another, doing all of your thing. A wonderful day, wonderful sermon, wonderful Wednesday. Happy Valentine's Day. You said it, you said it this time. Wonderful Wednesday. I'm glad. Hey, thank you to everybody that joined us tonight. Um, I know it's special. We thought day. it would just be him and I and... Nothing else. So we're glad to get it. Kathy Murray, thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate you in those chat rooms going back and forth. We need to hire you. (laughs) Thank you for what you're doing. Well, anything else? Pray. Uh, Pray. Uh, The next Wednesday is when the zoning board meets here in town uh, to give us a yes or a no. Uh, We've sent our first deposit check in. Large deposit check. (laughs) So you guys who are givers, thank you. Uh, you, you're paying for it, um, but we've also we've gotten a pre-approval for a couple of things. The uh, the county has already pre-approved us for water and septic out there. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we've already gotten told from the the paperwork that we got back from them that they don't see any reason why we can't build a church on that property. So this this meeting is to kind of ferret out all those details. There were like 15 points that they put in a document. So we're going to go to that meeting and and. Talk and everything to, will go according to God's will. We need y'all to pray. That's all we want. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else but God's will. So I'm excited. So put it. your slippers really far under your bed tonight. That way when you wake up in the morning and you have to get on your knees to get the slippers while you're down there, go ahead and say a prayer. I think he's getting this preacher thing down pat, y'all. I, I stole that. That one's from uh, Denzel Washington, <laughs> some speech he gave to his graduating class. <laughs> I'm thinking it's... I saw it on a uh, some motivational video that I was watching earlier, but it was, it was so good. Put your, put your slippers way under your bed so you got to get on your knees to get down there. And while you're down there... Pray. All right, we're going to let y'all go. We're going to let y'all go. Have a great Valentine's Day. Come early on Sunday and be ready for an awesome word. We'll see you then. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.